Good morning and welcome to City Church Canterbury. I'd like to extend a massive welcome if you are new here and this is your first time joining us online. I want you to know that you are so welcomed here. Here at City Church, we believe in a God who actively cares for us. No matter whether we think the issue is big or small, he cares. That being said, in the description down below, we have a, a form that's the how can we be praying for you form. Um, this form you can fill out with any prayer requests you may have and we have an army of prayers ready to be praying for you and whatever you decide to fill out in that form. Like I said, God doesn't care how big or little we think our issues are, he cares just the same. As we're online, we also have a chat feature. If you're watching this being premiered, there's a chat box, should be over here. Um, feel free to say hello, if not, say hello in the comments down below. This way we can be a community together, even though we are apart. And that way we can feel connected and strengthened as a whole, as a church. Uh, finally, I'm just going to pray for us before I hand over to Joel and the band. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this week. Thank you for this week, whether we've had a great week or it's been really tough. I just want to rejoice in you, Lord. We just want to rejoice in you as a church. And I just pray that even though we can't be together, as a collective, we will feel your spirit upon us this today during this service, during the worship, during this preach, Lord. I pray that your word and your spirit will come to us and fill us and that we can just spread your word across our city, even when we are not meeting together, Lord. In your name, Jesus, amen. Over to Joe and the band. Good morning. We're now gonna be singing some praise to God, um, singing about how Jesus came and left his throne above um, to die on a cross for us, and we can celebrate that uh, as one big family. Maybe you're a family at home, and you can celebrate, dance, and clap to these songs. You should know what to do, hopefully. Um, or if you're on your own, you can dance around looking stupid like I am. Um, but to help us do that, we've got some of the youth band who are hopefully waving right now. Um, it's great to be with you and leading you uh, as we worship God together. Let's do that. One, two, three, four. Light pierced. Light pierced through the dark. The day of dawn when sorrow was restored to joy. Fear had turned to hope. At the grave, the heavy stone was rolled away. And bursting through, defeating death, you left behind an empty tomb. You broke the curse of sin and you'll make all things new. All creation joins the song in praise to you. Jesus is risen, he is alive and reigns, and we will celebrate his victory. Jesus is risen, he is alive and reigns, and we will celebrate him. You need to dance. You 
broke the curse of sin and you'll make all things new. All creation joins a song in praise to you. For we know that Jesus is risen. He is alive and reigns. And we will celebrate his victory. Jesus is risen. He is alive and reigns. And we celebrate his victory Jesus is risen he is alive and reigns and we will celebrate his victory Jesus is risen he is alive and reigns and we will celebrate the risen king the risen king the risen king powerful one, the risen King. This is the day of favor.
Jesus to the dark, betrays all he's got to bring us home. What kind of grace runs to our aid, lays down his life when we're sinking. Your love turned us around, set our feet on solid ground, set our feet on solid ground. Your faithful love has turned us around. Set our feet on solid ground, set our feet on solid ground, 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 ground. Maybe just use this time as we play through some of the chords just to think about the faithfulness of God. That Jesus came to die on a cross for us. To put our feet on solid ground. What a great thing that is. And he doesn't just stop there. He's still with us now faithfully walking with us through life. So just maybe think about that and praise Him for that. Steadfast love. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great. songs written in a bit of old English and, and yet the, the truth is still the same today we can come before Jesus no matter what we've done during the week no matter all the things we might have done that we're ashamed of we can still come before Jesus we can come before our Father because Jesus has made a way dying on the cross setting our feet on a solid ground so before we even do anything it's just good to to appreciate that and to thank Jesus let's begin to thank him that you can come before the holy holy king of kings
Well, hello and welcome to our first of our August Summer Sundays online. My name's Martin and I'm going to be sharing very briefly uh, some hopefully encouraging and uh, strengthening truths from God's Word from the Bible. Uh, but before I do, we're going to have a friend of mine come and share with us uh, the story that we're going to be looking at today in Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through to the end of the chapter. This story is taken from Mark 5, 21 to 43. It's called Jesus Heals a Woman and Jairus's Daughter. One day, Jesus took a boat trip across the Sea of Galilee. As he arrived on the shore, lots of people gathered around him wanting to see him and hear him speak because they'd heard all about the amazing things that he had done. While he was with these people, a Jewish leader called Jairus came running up to Jesus through the crowd and fell at his feet. You see, Jairus's daughter was really sick and he didn't know what to do. This is when he decided to turn to Jesus. Jesus, my beautiful daughter is so sick and I'm afraid she's going to die. I've heard all about the wonderful things you've done. Please come to my house and heal her. Without a moment's thought, Jesus helped him up off the floor and said, let us go at once. Jairus and Jesus rushed as quickly as they could to Jairus's house. All the crowds who had been with Jesus followed him, wanting to see what was going to happen. On his way there, surrounded by the crowd, Jesus suddenly stopped and turned around to his disciples saying, someone's just touched me, who was it? Jesus, you're in the middle of a crowd. It could be any one of these people, the disciples replied in confusion. What they didn't know is that when Jesus was touched, he felt the power of God come out from him. In the middle of a crowd was a woman who had been ill for 12 years. We sometimes might be sick for a day or even a week, but this poor lady had been ill for 12 whole years. That's longer than some of you have been alive. She'd gone to every doctor and yet she'd not got better. In fact, she'd got worse. Just like Jairus, she had heard that Jesus could heal and so, sneaking through the crowd, she crept up to Jesus and touched his clothing. She said to herself, I believe that this man can heal me. I must touch his, his coat. When she touched him, she was immediately healed. Jesus looked around to find the person who touched him. He wasn't the kind of person who only wanted to heal someone of their physical problems. He wanted to know them personally and heal them of their spiritual problems too. The woman, who was worried and fearful about what Jesus would say, fell down before him just like Jairus had done. Her eyes were filled with tears and she told him all of her problems. Jesus responded by taking her hand, lifting her up from the ground, wiping away her tears and saying, My child! You believed and now you are well. Jesus had barely finished speaking when a servant from Jairus's house came running up to him saying, Master, it's too late to heal your daughter. She's dead. There's no point in Jesus coming now. Jairus broke down in tears, but Jesus turned to him and said, it's not too late. Do not fear, trust me. They quickly continued their journey to Jairus's house where they found family, friends and servants crying loudly as they mourned the death of the little girl. Jesus said to them, do not worry, I will wake her from her slumber. In an instant, the people began to laugh at him in disbelief. Who does this guy think he is? She's dead, how can he wake her up? At Jesus' command, everyone left the room apart from Jesus, the girl and her mother. Gently, Jesus approached the little girl's body and said to her, Talitha Kumi, which means, little girl, it's time to get up. Immediately, the girl got up and began walking. Jairus could not believe what he saw. Throughout his life, Jesus helped many other people like Jairus' daughter, and the ill woman as he wanted to bring God's kingdom and mend the broken world he'd created. When Jairus's daughter woke up, 
Jesus said, I think it's about time to get this girl something to eat. Well, the story that we've just heard read to us is a very fascinating story. I don't know what jumped out to you as you were listening to it, but there's some things I want to just draw out for us this morning. No matter who you are today, no matter uh, what age you are, no matter what your life story is, I believe that Jesus wants to speak hope into our hearts today. And what strikes me most about this story is that there seems to be two main uh, kind of dynamics to this story going on. We have um, Jairus coming to Jesus and asking him for help uh, to come and heal his daughter. And we also have this woman who has had this problem for many, many years of uh, of just, just uh, ill health and, and difficulty and sickness that she needs Jesus to help her with. We have these two people at play. What we see in this story is that there's, there's two different ways that Jesus's power is at, outworked in their life, but with a similar outcome and with a similar lesson. The way that Jesus's power is outworked is it comes with the power of healing. I want to start by saying this today. We believe in a God that can and does heal. He doesn't always, and we can't explain that. But that shouldn't rob us of the faith of believing and trusting that God is a healer. He's revealed himself in the Bible as that. God has shown from the beginning of the Bible through to the end of the Bible that he is a healer. We can trust him in that. And again, the passage we've just heard read shows us that actually Jesus is a healer. He heals both. He brings Jairus' daughter back from the dead. He heals this woman of the problem that she's had for a very long time. Healing comes through Jesus Christ. Now, it's important to say that actually we believe as Christians that the ultimate healing comes when Jesus will return. We believe that Jesus is alive. We believe that Jesus will come again. We believe that Jesus is victorious. That means that when Jesus died on the cross, he defeated sin and death. And when Jesus rose again, he sealed that victory. And so he will return. And when he returns, the Bible tells us that actually there will sickness will be no more. That it means that for the rest of eternity, forever after Jesus returns, we will not know sickness. We'll never see it again. So we know that Jesus is the ultimate healer, but we also know that we can see Jesus's healing crash into today. I have seen in my own life stories of people who have been sick and God has healed them miraculously. Sometimes I can still remember for myself uh, having a cramp in my calf when I was about 21 years old. My, my calf had swollen up to double the size of the other one. I was feeling rubbish. I was struggling to walk Uh, My friends prayed for me in church and their swelling completely disappeared as they prayed. It was incredible. The pain was gone by the end of their prayers. It was amazing. Jesus had healed me in that moment. But I also know many others that actually they've seen healing through uh, medicine, which is a gift of God to help us um, through time. But also I know many that actually they haven't seen that healing. And this is the challenge we have to walk through and, and handle is that Jesus is a healer. That is true. But we don't always see him heal. He doesn't always heal in the ways we would expect that we do know that he will ultimately and fully heal forever in heaven. That's the hope that we have. But what we see is that the way the story outworks is, is very different. One we have is, is Jairus coming to Jesus and saying, Jesus, please help. My daughter is unwell. I cannot begin to imagine how hard that must have been for Jairus to have his daughter sick and not knowing what to do, running to find this guy, Jesus, that there might be hope in. And actually we see that Jesus then... Uh, agrees to go and help but actually goes very slowly and we have this other woman who uh, is in the crowd pushing towards Jesus just thinking if I just touch him I'll be healed and she pushes through she touches him she's instantly healed by the time Jesus gets to Jairus's daughter she's died people are are grieving at the fact that she has died and Jesus then brings her back to life we see that their journeys were very different but here's the message and the lesson I think it's important for us to learn today is that for both of them a key part of the journey was learning to wait and trust God. Let's take the woman. She pushed through the crowd, she touched Jesus, she was instantly healed. But we know that she had this sickness for years. Some of us, we read the Bible and we forget that there are journeys that people have to go on. We read about the the miraculous moment and we assume that that should be our story always. If we're sick today, God should heal us today. Actually, when you read the Bible, you see that often people that are healed when they encounter Jesus, there have been a long time of waiting that has been part of their life. This woman would have been um, just disrespected. She would have been pushed away. People wouldn't have been close to her because of the sickness that she had. She would have been looked down on by many. She would have had to live for year upon year with this stigma over her. And then Jesus heals her. Just imagine 
the freedom that Jesus brought to that woman, the hope that Jesus brought, the transformation that Jesus brought. That's the hope that we need to cling on to. This woman could have given up. She could have thought, she, I'm sure she'd gone elsewhere and she'd seen other people trying to get better and nothing had helped. Here's about Jesus. She could have just said, ah, oh, there's no point. She could have given up on hope, but she didn't. She continued to trust God in the waiting. And I feel like for many of us, we're in this situation. We're sick. We know others that are sick. There's things going on in life or around, in our own lives or the lives of those around us that we just, we're growing discouraged by, we're disheartened by, we're overwhelmed by. Today, Jesus wants you to say, keep trusting. Keep reaching out for him. Keep believing that if you touch the hem of his garment, there is healing, there is power, there is transformation. Don't stop believing those truths. We see for Jairus, there's this point where people come and they say, oh, don't bother, your, your daughter's died. Jesus, there's no point in Jesus going. And yet Jesus continues through discouragement, through obstacles, through difficulties. Jesus carries on on that journey. Don't let obstacles get in the way. Jairus continues that walk, believing that there is hope in Christ believing that Jesus is greater than anything else. And we see even in the face of the impossible, Jesus changes things. And that's the message for you and I today. I want to encourage you with all of my heart. I know that for many of us, we're going through difficult moments. We're, we're faced with, with impossible challenges ahead of us. Whether that be questions of the future, whether that be questions of our money, whether that be questions of uh, our physical well-being or our emotional well-being. Whether that be fears of, of school for next year after all the changes that have happened and what will it look like in September. Just feeling like it's never going to be the same again. Many of us are, are gripped with these challenges and with these fears and with these concerns. And I think the lesson that Jesus would want us to learn today is to be patient and to trust him. Be patient. Sounds so easy. I, I wish I could learn patience that easily. But I feel like for all of us to learn patience, you have to be patient in the learning. It's a journey you have to walk. It's not an easy walk. That woman had to learn to be patient for that healing. She had to learn to not give up, to not grow weary in doing good, to not throw away her confidence in God, but to believe that there was hope still, even in the midst of the disappointment. Jesus wants us to do that. He wants us to be patient. Don't give up. Can I encourage you this summer? Don't check out from the things of God. Perhaps you've got holidays planned or time off planned. Don't use that to put your head in the sand. Use that to allow yourself to switch on to God. Switch off from the pressures of work and school and all of those things and switch on to God. Allow him to speak to you, to comfort you, to encourage you. God never ignores us. Sometimes it feels like he might be. The Psalms are full of prayers, of, of prayers of saying, God, how long are you going to hide your face from me? But God doesn't hide his face from us. He's always close to us. So sometimes he feels he's distant, but he's not. This summer, use it as a chance to, to connect back with him, to be patient, knowing that he is God and he is good. His timing is perfect, but it's also very different to ours. But also to trust him. Trust him in the waiting, trust him in the pain. Jairus trusted Jesus. Even when he heard the most devastating news, he trusted Jesus. I want to encourage us, let's be those that trust Jesus. Through the highs and through the lows of life, let's trust him. He is a good God. I believe today God wants to speak to you, whether you're five or 500. God wants to say to you today, trust me, be patient. What do you need to trust God with? Perhaps in our families or in our households or with friends, we could start a conversation this week just talking about what is it that we are finding it hard to wait for and how can we grow at trusting God in the waiting? Because I believe these stories show us that he is faithful, he is powerful, and he is good, but that we are called to be those that are patient and those that trust. Let me pray for us. Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for who you are. I do thank you that we can trust you. And Lord, I pray for each one of us today that we would be those that learn continually to be patient. Patient in the fears, patient in the pain, patient in the hardship, patient in the confusion, patient in the sorrow. Lord, help us to be those that are patient and to be those that trust you, that our patience would come from an active trust, not a passive dismissal of all that's going on, but actively trusting you, that you are at work, that you can break through and that you can change. So Lord, I just pray for every single one of us today and actually this week, would we be those that just search our hearts 
and seek to contemplate and to consider where is it that we need to be patient and how can we be those that grow in trusting you, I ask in your wonderful name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you have an amazing Sunday and an amazing week. Don't forget, if anything from today's service has stirred your heart, we do have the prayer form down below. Um, how can we pray for you? So feel free to fill that in. There is also a connect form if you'd like to be more connected with the church. So have an absolutely amazing week and we hope to see you next week.